In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Well, good morning all. Good morning. And good morning for, to those who are um, celebrating the Eucharist with us in different countries. You know, the gospel today is very, very special. We hear Jesus speaking about the sowing of seeds and the harvesting. And we've heard this gospel many, many times. But the message of the gospel, I think, is not just the sowing of the seeds, but the ways in which we sow those seeds, just as important. So for a few moments, <clears throat> let's reflect on the way in which that word of God, the way in which we plant that seed, and again, the ways in which lovingly, compassionately, and kindly, we plant those seeds. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus left the house and sat by the lakeside. But such crowds gathered round him that he got into a boat and sat there. The people all stood on the beach, and he told them many things in parables. He said, imagine a sower going out to sow. As he sowed, some seeds fell on the edge of the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on patches of rock, where they found little soil, and sprang up straight away, because there was no depth to the earth. But as soon as the sun came up, they were scorched, and not having any roots, they withered away. Others fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up, and choked them. Others fell on rich soil and produced their crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Listen, anyone who has ears. Then the disciples went up to him and asked, Why do you talk to them in parables? Because, he replied, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven are revealed to you, but they are not revealed to them. For anyone who has will be given more, and he will have more than enough. But from anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. The reason I talk to them in parables is that they look without seeing and listen without hearing or understanding. So in their case, this prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled. You will listen and listen again, but not understand. See and see again, but not perceive. For the heart of this nation has grown coarse. Their ears are dull of hearing, and they have shut their eyes for fear that they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and be converted and be healed by me. But happy are your eyes because they see, your ears because they hear. I tell you solemnly, Many prophets and holy men long to see what you see and never saw it, to hear what you hear and never heard it. You, therefore, are to hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom without understanding, the evil one comes and carries off what was sown in his heart. And the man who received the seed on the edge of the path, the one who received it on the patches of rock, 
is the man who hears the word and welcomes it at once with joy. But he has no roots in him. He does not last. Let some trial come or some persecution on account of the word, and he falls away at once. The one who receives the seed in thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this world and the lure of riches choke the word, and so he produces nothing. And the one who receives the seed in rich soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He is the one who yields a harvest and produces now a hundredfold, now sixty, now thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, my dear friends, it's wonderful to see you all here today. Again, even, even the, those of you who are wearing masks, I can see the twinkle in the eyes, so I now know what smiling with the eyes actually means. But it's great to see members of our community here today, and they also our global community. You know, this gospel we have heard, we've heard it so many times, and... I can almost hear you say, I know what he's going to say next. He's going to say that in our words and in our actions, we plant the seeds. And you know, seeds are very interesting. I don't know. I don't know if you can see these, but these are a selection of nuts and seeds. And you know, in the Mediterranean, as we know, the, the farmer would go out with a basket full of seeds and just scatter them. This was the tradition of, of planting in antiquity. But you know, seeds are something, as I said, as I've said so many times in the past, and what Jesus is saying as well, our words and our actions are the seeds which we sow. And as we've heard constantly, what we sow, we reap the harvest um, in the fruit and in the crops. So the good things which we seed, well, it uh, follows as I have said. Let me put these back. But you know, Jesus says in this, and it's really important, and he brings this parable over and, and explains it in a beautiful way. And essentially what he's saying is the way in which we can um, be blocked from receiving the word of God. This is essentially what he's saying, that each and every one of us, without that openness of heart, we can actually block the word of God taking root and producing fruit. And we hear him saying that hearts that have become coarse and hardened, that lock out his love, we hear that, again, ears that can no longer hear his voice. Think of when you tune in a radio. We want to, to tune in to a radio which is, um, is, is going to be uh, following what we want, the sound we want to hear, the music we want to hear. And so often in life, we do the same thing with Jesus. We tune out of his voice and tune in to another. And this is essentially what we hear of the ways in which we tune out his voice so we don't hear the challenge of his word. And then eyes that often have become blinded by sort of ego or greed or power, you know? So essentially, what are we, am I saying here? Welcome to the human condition, because that's what often happens to each and every one of us. But you know... It's not just the planting of seeds. The challenge today is how we plant them. Um, a Jesuit priest, Father Hem, says something very special here. Just bear with me, I'll read it to you. He unfolds uh, facets of understanding the symbol of the sower and the seed in this gospel. He says, there is reason to make Seed serve as a double duty symbol. 
Indeed, Matthew, in the scene immediately preceding this parable discourse, has provided an episode illustrating, and this is very important, how a community of people is created by their response to the word of God. I mean, that's really amazing. Listen to that again. How a community of people is created in their response to the word of God. Because as we heard in the, again, in the scriptures, when Jesus is told that his mothers and brothers are standing and outside and want to speak to him, he turns towards his disciples and says, you know, who are my mother, my brothers and sisters? And this is essentially the, the challenge of the gospel today, not just the scattering of seeds, you know, in our words and in our actions, but the way in which we scatter those seeds, you know? And this is really important. If I'm not mistaken, we hear Jesus saying, the will of my Father is that we truly love one another. Now, I know you're going to come. You've heard this so often. When Jesus is speaking about love, he's not speaking about some kind of warm, fluffy sentiment. He's speaking about that wonderful foundation of all love, which we know as agape. And you've heard this so often. Agape, the love Jesus speaks about, is Caring, respect, and justice. This is essentially when Jesus uses the word love, he's speaking about the ways in which we care for one another, we respect one another, and we are just towards one another. And this is really the foundation, the foundation of what this proclamation of the word is about. It's the foundation, the translation, and the interpretation of our love for God and our love for each other. And this is embodied in the caring, respect, and in that justice. Am I making any sense here? Now, one of the great tragedies and distorted distortions of passionate love we've been speaking about for the last few weeks, the way in which each and every one of us has that passionate love of God. But one of the challenges, again, is the way in which Sometimes that passionate love of God can result, which we are called to embody that passionate love of God, but sometimes it can become ruthlessly hardened, deaf, and blind. So that, again, if you look around the world globally at what the, the great atrocities um, committed in God's name, people feeling so passionate about the Word of God that um, anybody who is wounded, hurt, or anything else, sometimes they're just perceived as um, collateral damage so that I can plant the Word. Am I making any sense here? So what we hear coming through in this gospel today is that the planting of the, the Word of God, not just globally, but in our own community, that it is done with the foundational image of agape. That when we're planting the Word of God, when we're trying to illuminate and bring that joy, that hope, that new beginning into the lives of others, that we do it with care, we do it with respect, and we do it with justice. It's so, it's so easy to cause a lot of woundedness, brokenness, and pain, uh, as we've seen globally uh, the great atrocities committed in God's name. So think about it. That seed, <laughs> that seed is planted with love, with compassion, and with commitment. Do you, know, do you remember those two words I used over the last two weeks? hollowing and hallowing. The way in which, again, if you remember, I've said this two weeks 
uh, in the past, the way in which the love of God hollows us to contain greater compassion, greater understanding, greater healing, and great love. And it's then that we become hallowed, holy. So when we enter the lives of other people, when we want to bring that love into the lives of other people, we do it with a gentleness, with a compassion, with a warmth, with an attraction. And this is what, why so many people responded to the Word of God around the world. Not that it was just the scattering of seeds <laughs> and they fell where they were going to fall, but the way in which they were placed lovingly, with care, with respect, and with justice. So today in our Mass, we pray for as we all denominations, all religions, all faith beliefs, that we pray to that all of us in the scattering of that seed of love may do it with care, with respect, and with justice. Give it some thought. Is that a yes? <laughs> Good. Well, my dear friends, let me see a smile there. That's good. Just before our final prayer and blessing, it's great to see you all here today. And again, we pray especially for those who cannot be here uh, due to shielding or any of the other uh, circumstances. But it's a time to, when we think again in these um, challenging uh, conditions, the way in which we take that love of God into the lives of others. This is what it's all about. I think if this pandemic has taught us anything, it is the importance of loving one another, caring for one another, respecting one another, and being just towards one another. This is what the agape of this gospel is about. You know, so we ask the Lord again to be with us. So um, keep our eyes again. We are coming out of this that the Lord will be our strength and our help. And to all of you watching this at home, remember each member of this community loves you very, very much. You're not on your own. Each one of us is with you as the Lord is with you. So God bless you all. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have a wonderful and blessed day.